Okay, guys, so you know the saying that someone is in their own little world? Some people are in their own entire dimension. Imagine if you guys saw me doing that. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Jimmy. I'm a raw vegan medical doctor and a dancer, and I make videos on holistic health, minimalism, living foods, and plant-based living. And jack of all trades. All to use with my dance. If any of that is of interest to you, then consider subscribing down below. So in this video, I'll be sharing what I eat in a day while pregnant on my diet of raw living plant foods. I'm currently 26 weeks pregnant at the time of this video, and so far I've had an easeful and joyful pregnancy without symptoms like morning sickness, edema, leg cramps, back pain, constipation, and other things. I feel so thankful for this, and I really believe a large part of this is due to my food choices. Or the animal foods you ate so before you were vegan. So how has my diet changed before becoming pregnant and then since becoming pregnant? Well, before pregnancy, my raw diet was fruit-based along with nuts, seeds, sprouted legumes, plenty of greens and vegetables, including sea vegetables. And since pregnancy, my diet has consisted basically of the same foods, although at different times of the pregnancy, I've craved one type of food more than another. I talk about this in my other video about raw pregnancy, um, about my raw pregnancy journey. You These girls really like it raw, man. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. You must be missing I something. I do have to take a moment and say that for those of you who love durian, I was really happy that my taste for durian didn't go away when I became pregnant. I'd heard that this My was taste possible, for durian. <laughs> but I enjoyed some delicious durian, oh, durian and loved it in Malaysia during the early weeks of this pregnancy. So everyone is different, and that's something I really want to share. Worshipping it. So what has changed? This is some sort of ritual. Well, here's a day to illustrate. Today for breakfast, juicy fruit, which I have been doing for years. I love breaking my fast with juicy fruit. This day I had watermelon, which is super hydrating and crucial Isn't all fruit juicy? for baby's healthy growth, helping the amniotic pretty fluid sure it is. be nice and juicy and sufficient, more than sufficient. These girls like it raw and juicy. Um, I love watermelon I'm a and fan. enjoy having lots of it and I'm having more than I used to have. So definitely the quantity I've been eating has gone up on most days during lots the pregnancy. Lots of raw and juicy. I had this entire half as well as a sizable part of my How can you think that's normal to sit there and eat a whole watermelon. watermelon? Next, I had plums um, and calcium and folate rich oranges. We have a plum tree in on the land in which we are renting. And it's such a great source of folate and good. vitamin K, K and several B vitamins. The, the form in fruit is different than the animal form. Plums. Not good for you. And it doesn't do the same for thing. For dinner, dinner today was a large tapa style medley of greens, um, fresh tomatoes, avocado. She's got really high quality produce. It looks good. And raw germinated sprouted lumpini beans, which I find easily here they're local to where we live i love to include sprouted seeds and legumes into my diet and i have a video on this channel on how to do that just that so you can check that out it includes how to do it at home and the health benefits so i basically made raw wraps from these i would stack the leaves and put in these delicious fillings and enjoyed this entire head of lettuce greens Hey, listen, if I we open a raw vegan restaurant Anderson, in New York City, she could so be my chef. We haven't gotten that yet, but other dinners I've enjoyed throughout my if she brings that produce with been her. traveling has been lots of green smoothies and green smoothie bowls. The slop salads has arrived. My raw buckwheat stir. I have a video on that on this channel also that you can check out. Oh, buckwheat. Out. Don't tell that and, guy from that video. Um, buckwheat. Look it up. Raw go crazy for the buckwheat. The short time we had a dehydrator available to us. 
I love getting in lots of protein rich greens and healthy fats. Protein rich greens. My dinner meals. <laughs> protein rich and greens. And that leads me to my take on supplements. Again, I think everyone is different. And I think every woman needs to figure out if and which supplements work for her during pregnancy. Before becoming pregnant, I was taking pretty regularly a B12 sublingual spray, and I've been doing that for a few years. And my B12 level has stayed normal. I check that every couple of years. These, these people really pregnancy. need to check their homocysteine instead work. of just worrying about B12 my levels. B12 lo level was normal. Like homocysteine was is high. Iron, You're not absorbing it. B12 folate levels and vitamin D has been normal. Um, for years now because i get a lot of sunshine no in. one cares about your I blood work if your baby comes supplement. out with a crooked face so hate since to break pregnancy, it to you see i've continued my b12 supplementation and i also added to this omega-3 um, i take an algae based omega-3 supplement algae supplements very toxic fetal development fetal brain development, polluted sources and because better than nothing times, though the fats i'm having while amazing a lot of them have high omega-6 and I want to get the omega-3 ratio up. So I decided to take omega-3 for that reason. I don't take it every day. I take it, it should be. a couple of times a week or once a week, depending on what I'm feeling and depending on what my diet has looked like that day. If I've gotten a lot of omega-6 fats in and not much walnuts or chia, or flax seeds, which are high in omega-3. So then she's I'll afraid of supplement. eating the capsule. That's how I've been doing it. I also have taken pretty erratically a prenatal um, multivitamin because honestly, my diet is so nutrient rich, so full of okay. vitamin A. If you say so. Um, vitamin C. You sure? It's not beta carotene? Even iodine because I include sea vegetables in my diet that I don't feel the need to take a prenatal supplement every single day. And because I didn't have morning Then sickness, why do you take it at all? I've had good, pretty good appetite most days of my pregnancy. It says beta carotene. I will say that for women who I feel like struggle with appetite, struggle with nausea or even vomiting, I think a consistent prenatal supplement might be a great idea. Organic food so again, blend? Is it poop? Yourself, honoring your diet, knowing what you're getting in and what you might need to supplement. We've been so lucky to be living and traveling in places where we get I think carnivore dieters can make a lot of money selling food. their poop to vegans. And my diet, again, being living plant foods is incredibly nutritious. Living plant foods. I also have some issues with supplements in the sense You're eating it right out of the ground? The like... regulation of them and the bioavailability of them in the body is pretty questionable. I really believe that we should Isn't try Isn't the bioavailability of, of plants vitamins, questionable? If not all, say vitamin D, which we get from the sunshine, and B12 from microorganisms, from our living foods, from our foods. So choosing also organic food-based vegan supplements when you can. And this is a great example of one that I found, which is um, My Kind Organics. And yeah, that's what I've been doing for my supplementation. Um, the other way I supplement is with herbs, and I'll get to that in I mean, a moment. She seems pretty coherent. I will say one thing about intermittent fasting. I don't consider my diet pre-pregnancy to be intermittent fasting, but if people looked at my diet, they may have thought that because I usually would eat at a window, in a window of about 1.30 p.m. to about 5 p.m. Um, but I did that very organically, and I have a video on this I channel mean, so, so you're that. unintentionally intermittent on fasting. instinct and intuition, not on any rules around intermittent fasting. And that's really important for me to share. Check that video out. Excuse me. I wish I had somewhere like that to Since swim. Since pregnancy, that wasn't full I of chlorine. haven't been able to get all my food in during those hours, and I haven't wanted to. So I have let myself eat whenever I want to. I eat when I'm hungry, I stop when I'm full, and then when I'm able to eat more, I eat more. And so I've been eating pretty regularly um, between the hours of about noon or one. I don't get hungry before then, so I don't eat before then. But I sometimes, often actually, especially as my belly expands, will have um, more food later in the evening. 
here I'm having oranges I think at 8 o'clock in the evening I try to still eat about two hours before going to bed but that is not always the case I haven't experienced any reflux or acid reflux so far so I think again that's because of the food I'm eating I try to eat hydrating foods um, and not things nothing really dense or acidic before bed so intermittent the whole fasting, diet's acidic it's full so of much, sugar but again I don't believe I was doing it beforehand but any rules around um, when I eat are not being followed during pregnancy. It's all based on instinct and my hunger. And for me, honoring this, um, eating this way has really, I believe, made for such an easeful pregnancy so far. I know that there's three more months to go, but so far it's been such a joy. I gotta be honest. I am very surprised at this young woman's intelligence and understanding of nutrition, except she doesn't know that the bioavailability of plant vitamins is not the same as animal vitamins. <sighs> you know, just thinking about that, it doesn't seem like that information is readily available. It's very hard to find, you know, for vitamin A, for the B vitamins, D, K2, uh, even vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids, especially the minerals and the elements. These vegans don't understand that the plant forms of vitamins aren't available to the body and that the plant forms of minerals and elements are typically inhibited by anti-nutrients such as phytates and oxalates. You know, she did soak some seeds. Uh, she is consuming very high quality produce. So I, I think she's going to be okay for her pregnancy, uh, especially if she was consuming animal foods recently, you know, before going vegan. Uh, but you know, the child's health will definitely suffer. How much so? We don't really know. Uh, she's better off than a lot of vegans are still not as good as someone consuming a small amount of meat. I have never been able to wrap my head around how someone could be so intelligent yet ignore simple and basic things like animal food cravings, you know, the fact that they're consuming unrealistic amounts of carbs and sugars from modern forms of fruit. There has to be preconceived notions, biases, whether they're cute, cuddly animal lovers or have special interest funding, causing them to believe this. Yeah, there might be a small percentage of them that are truly brainwashed and indoctrinated, but there is clear, apparent, factual evidence that a vegan diet is lacking nutrients for overall health and even more evidence of people going off of a vegan diet and feeling better and healing themselves. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. You can also check out Frankie's Naturals, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. If you'd like to reach out to me for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, send me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com.